All right. Hello, everybody. And uh, thanks for being here with us. Uh, first off, congratulations uh, to Wisconsin. Uh, you know, good win for their program. And, you know, football is usually a game that the team that makes the fewest mistakes wins. And uh, they made a lot less mistakes than us. They played much better fundamental football. Um, I'm proud of the way we competed to the very end. Uh, I thought our guys battled physically, uh, but we just made too many uh, of the fatal mistakes to overcome. You know, a, a block punt that leads to a touchdown. We take a lead in the third quarter and then we give up a 60, 70 yard kickoff return. You know, we throw four interceptions in the last 17, 18 minutes of the game. Uh, we had some eye violations on defense in the play action game. And what happens is a, a very good, hard fought, competitive game got out of hand because of all the turnovers and special teams miscues. So we just made way too many mistakes to win a football game. Uh, and again, congratulations to Wisconsin. Uh, but I, I certainly want to thank our, our coaches, staff, and players, the commitment they've made since July. Uh, I want to thank Danny Morrison and the Charlotte Sports Foundation uh, for inviting us to play in their bowl game and the Panthers and Dukes Mayo uh, for their sponsorship of this event. And uh, again, we, we did a lot of good things. We moved the football. You know, it's not too often you outgain a team 518 to 266 and lose the game. But when you throw four picks, uh, you're not going to ever overcome that. So again, disappointed, proud of the effort. Uh, but we'll learn from it, grow from it, and hopefully be a better program in 21 because of it. Coach, what would you attribute those mistakes to? I mean, we just, we threw one interception all year. And I just think we, we telegraphed some things. Uh, you know, I thought he held on to targets too long and Wisconsin did a great job of, of breaking uh, on his eyes and, and breaking on the arm action. You know, it just, you know, we missed some throws. Uh, we had open guys in the first half that we missed. You know, I really thought we, we should have come out of that half, you know, up 21, seven or, or 28, 14. And we just missed some plays. We dropped the ball, missed open receivers. And Wisconsin is just a steady, consistent program that doesn't beat themselves. And, uh, I, you know, it's not one thing. They just, they did a great job and, and we didn't play well. We just made too many mistakes at the quarterback position to overcome. Coach, uh, can you can you talk about the, the first interception? It looked like a little wheel route out to the left and the run the running back didn't seem to turn around to see the, the throw. What, 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 what happened there? Well, they, they ran a field pressure and uh, our quarterback thought it was man, a man pressure, and it was his own pressure. So they dropped the one guy out. And uh, I mean, it just, the ball shouldn't have gone there. That wasn't the design of the play. Uh, we hit that thing earlier against man, and we got a nice sideline route to Christian Beal, uh, but that's not where the ball goes against zone. So we, we misread it and, and threw it right to him. Hey, did you uh, consider, um giving Sam a, a break at some point and throwing someone else in there to see how they would do? Uh, yeah, less, but, you know, it's a 14-point game. He's been our quarterback all year. There's 13 minutes left. I mean, you're, you're hoping with all the snaps he's taken, he'd, he'd play himself out of it. And then when we threw the fourth one at that point, it was just, you know, I, he was just not in a good place. And, I thought we should give those other guys uh, an opportunity to see what they can do. Is it fair to say that he showed some signs of snapping out of it at times too? Yeah, I mean, we just, I mean, we threw picks on how many consecutive possessions less and, and they weren't good picks. You know, they weren't a tip ball or, a, you know, I mean, we just threw it right to him. So, um, you know, he just, wasn't seeing things, feeling things, whatever, um, you know, and I, and I thought he played really well in the first quarter, the second half missed some throws. And I thought in the third quarter, he really settled down and was playing well. And, and that really, 
I mean, here is our ninth game. And for eight games and three quarters, we didn't really throw interceptions. And all of a sudden the, the dam opened and the floodgates and wow, I never ever thought we would have lost the game like that. Dave, were the linebackers doing something that maybe you guys didn't think they were going to do? Or were they kind of cheating up or what was going on there with the linebackers? You know, I'll, I'll defer and watch the film on that one, John. I mean, I, and you know, the one, the linebacker dropped and we thought it was a man pressure and it was zone. Uh, the other, just the safety jumped it. We were running slant routes and we threw the ball late and the safety just jumped it. Um, you know, I, again, the other two, I'll have to watch that closer, but just not, not a good day. What was your message to the team uh, after this game, especially having gone through such a bizarre season, so many missed games and practices? What was the message you just presented to those men in the locker room after this game? Well, first of all, the, you know, it's the last game of the season. So the season has a message and the primary message of the season is how proud I am of them. And this is a group that stuck together for 183 days and six game cancellations and 61 COVID tests. And here we are December 30th and we're still playing football. So from a season overview, I'm, I'm really proud of them. Um, we competed, you know, we competed with one of the better football programs in the country, but our players are smart. They know why you lose a game like this. You can't throw four picks. You can't have a punt blocked. You can't give up a long kickoff return. You know, you can't take your eyes off a guy in man coverage and beat good football teams. And those things just snowballed. And this went from an extremely competitive game that I thought we should have won uh, to a non-competitive game because of that. And, uh, and we control those things. Uh, I'm excited about the future of our program. You know, almost every senior that starts for us other than Boogie Basham is gonna come back. Uh, and so I think we've really set ourselves up to have a really good football team in 21. Uh, but 21 is a long time from now. You know, this one's going to sting for a few weeks. And I think our guys need a break and they need rest and they need to get away and see their families. And we'll regroup and we'll start attacking 21. Dave, how did you feel the defense play? Um, you know, overall, uh, not bad. You know, I, I really thought if we could hold Wisconsin to under 150 yards rushing, we'd win the game. And we held them to 122 and they only had 266 yards of offense. But I mean, you can only give a team a short field how many times, you know, their second score is, you know, from the nine yard line. Um, they had the ball at the two yard line from the three yard line. I mean, you know, our offense and our special teams put our defense in a bad spot, you know, so we certainly didn't lose this game on defense. Um, when you give that many short fields, I mean, again, I credit Wisconsin, but we, we beat ourselves and they didn't beat themselves. And that's what good football teams do. They don't beat themselves. Hey, Coach Carlson. Yes. Hey, it's Chris Seidel from Hurston Radio. Sorry for your tough loss today. Uh, just talk about the running game. Are you excited about the running game for 2021? Yeah. I mean, I, we'll have all of our starting offensive linemen back. And we'll have all of our guys that got carries back. And we'll have all of our tight ends back. And good football players usually get better from year to year. And, you know, we really need to get back into the weight room. Uh, you know, we missed a whole off season last year and we need to get back in there. And uh, I expect us to be better. Uh, and I think, you know, there's a lot of optimism, but we got to put in the work. Dave, getting back to Sam a little bit, what, what's, is he a kind of kid that can, that can kind of shrug this off and I shrug it off, but how is he going to overcome this, you know, with a long off season like this? Well, that, that's, we got to wait and see, John. You know, again, all year, I thought he did a great job of taking care of the football. And uh, today was very uncharacteristic of Sam and our football team. Dave, you mentioned how optimistic you are for next season, but how important are the next few months? I know you talked about getting back in the weight room, but you know, spring practice, whatever that will look like, 
I mean, how important does that become with such a large roster? I mean, it, it's always important, Connor. And I mean, I'm, there's a part of me that's amazed we even got to where we got this year, missing all the weight rooms and spring practices we did. I mean, I, I say it again and again, we're a developmental program. And when a developmental program doesn't get a chance to develop, that's hard. And all those gains we typically make March, April, May, June, we didn't get to make those this year. You know, we're, we're not a five-star show up and play group. We're a, you get better year to year to year. And we're big into charting strength gains and speed gains. And none of those things happen this year. So that's, you know, our, our program is made in those winter and spring months and skipping it is really challenging for us. So it, it's really important for 21 that we have a really good spring and summer. Dave, you, talk, you touched a lot about the 24 hour rule and uh, not letting a win or loss carry over beyond that. And then you've also talked about a bye week, it being really tough to deal with a loss after a bye week. How do you deal with an end of season loss like this? And, and how do you mentally turn the page to next season? You, you with hope your group? Uh, that it's motivation. I mean, every man in that locker room knows that that thing shouldn't have ended up the way it did. And when you take ball security for granted, um, you know, that's what happens. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you last. I mean, we've, uh, you know, we've won three bowl games and now we've lost two. And it's just football. I mean, win or loss, you got to find a way to turn the page and move on. So again, this one bothers me. This will sting. Um, but we'll regroup and we'll attack 21, and that'll be a new year and a new season. Anything else here for Coach? I have one. Uh, Dave, Mike Salarte, Spectrum News 1. Is this a, how will you, maybe this is a better question for a couple of days from now, but how will you best remember? this football season you just talked about the lack of developmental opportunities that you had you guys still end up making a bowl game i mean when you if you kind of can put this in perspective and i know it's kind of tough but what is this year meant to you in terms of you and your staff and your kids and, and your, your young men i should say and and how you guys finish this thing out i i don't think our team's ever been more unified or the brotherhood ever has been uh stronger uh so again i I, and I told our players this last night, and I've said it multiple times that, you know, the evaluation of 2020 isn't necessarily how many wins or what the ranking was, is what teams stuck together to the very end. And we were one of those teams that stuck together to the very end. And I'm really proud of our team for doing that. And, uh, you know, the highlights and lowlights of this year weren't necessarily wins and losses. They were more... COVID tests and team meetings and opt-outs and things like that. So um, again, I'm proud we got back to a bowl. You know, we had a, a great October and, and won some games and we certainly didn't finish the way we wanted to. Uh, but with as many new starters that we broke in this year, uh, I thought our guys competed. And, you know, we, there was a few we won easily, one or two we, we lost and the rest of the games, we were right in there, and we won a couple of them. We lost a couple of them. So I'm hoping that we can take a next step as a program and, you know, be a, uh, you know, just a higher level team overall next year. You guys good? All right. Thanks, Coach. Great. Thank you, guys. Whenever you guys are ready. Sean, what was the feeling offensively? I mean, you guys were, were right there in the game and then a, a bunch of turnovers. Um, what could you tell was, was going on there? Um, yeah, it's just it's just frustrating. Um, you know, we you know, I thought we were competitive the whole game, and uh, it's nobody, it's not one person's fault. It's just uh I guess we just didn't execute at the end of the day. And um, it is what it is. Uh, we're going to keep our head up, and uh, this is just going to fuel us for the offseason. So. In a game like this, do you just 
and you had to go through it last year with the pin straight bowl too. Do you just want to press the fast forward button to spring ball and, and that kind of thing? Or in a year like this, do you have to balance that with wanting to go home and see family for the first time in six months? No, yeah, I think um, I think we're all just mentally exhausted, to be honest. I mean, I know we only played nine games. We usually play 13, but it felt like we played uh, 20 games. I mean, we're just all mentally on E. We all just need to go home, see our families, just be away from it for a couple of weeks. And uh, I think that would be really good for this team. And then when we come back in late January, we're, we're going to get after <clears throat> We're going to get after it for sure. Sean, what do you say to, to Sam and what, what happened out there today? I mean, he's obviously carried you guys in a few games. I mean, what do you say to someone like that? Uh, you just tell him you love him. And, you know, you're proud of him no matter what the outcome is. He's my quarterback. I'll stand by his side forever. And, uh, you know, I mean, he didn't have a bad game, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, he had the interceptions. But, I mean, he did his best. And I know he did. He gave it his all. And at the end of the day, yeah. He's just, you know, he's my brother. So I'm going to pick him up, pat him on the back, and, you know, be by his side. So. Sean, you talked about uh, getting after it in January. By the time you get to January, which is just a couple of days, or when you come back to get after it, you have to, you'll have some time to process what this year has been for you guys. If you, and maybe it's not a fair question right after the game, but how do you, view what you guys went through in 2020 with everything yeah this is i mean obviously we wanted to finish with a win but this is a huge accomplishment in itself i mean we all got here june 13th ish and we sacrificed so much just to play the sport we love and uh we could have lost every single game and it still would have been an amazing experience i'm just so glad everyone um training staff coaches uh the assistant training staff, students, uh, everyone that just sacrificed so much just to play this game we love. Uh, you know, it's just, it was a great season, and I'm so glad to be a part of it and that I had these memories. So, I was going to ask follow up: Is this a memorable year, or is this a forgettable year? Oh, uh, this is a memorable year for sure. I mean, nobody's done this ever. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was frustrating. They're, they're, they're the downs, they're the ups, but uh, now I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. And I know, I know my brothers will too. And I'm just so glad we got to finish it the right way and just finish it strong. Sean, if you were told going into the game that you guys would have more than 500 yards, um, that would be considered pretty successful against their defense, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we knew going into it, they hadn't faced an offense like us. Uh, I mean, they were just facing big 10 offenses that ran the ball. So we knew we were going to put up yards. And uh, yeah, we definitely had a chip on our shoulder knowing we were going up against the number one defense in the nation. So, uh, I mean, I'm not surprised by the, the yards. Uh, you know, we all expected it. We just wish we could execute better at the end of the day. Sean, what was the mood after uh, the first two drives to start off the game? You guys kind of had to be feeling like you could do no wrong. Yeah, no, uh, it felt good. Um, you know, we were obviously excited, but uh, just like, you know, previous games before, uh, like UNC, uh, Bell Bowl 2017, A&M went up 14-0. So, you know, We've been in the same place, we've been in the opposite place. So we knew the uh, game was far from over. I mean, obviously it was exciting to go 14 nothing, but, uh, you know, every, I think everyone on the sideline knew the game wasn't done. So, I mean, it was a good start. Just wish could have finished that way, so. Sean, can you pinpoint why you guys struggled keeping leads? I mean, you guys had some big leads in some other games too. I mean, is there any one thing that, that caused that, you think? Um. No, nah, I mean, honestly, not really. To be honest, I, I can't think of anything. Uh, the only thing I can think of is uh, we just got to execute better when it's third down and, you know, you got to keep those drives alive. You know, sometimes the ball bounces your way, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, it's it's frustrating losing like this multiple times in the season, but it just fuels the fire and, yeah, just keep us motivated to never let it happen again, basically. 
anything else for Sean? All right. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> for, uh, you guys are ready. Shakori, what were you thinking about as, as Sam just seemed to struggle there in the later part of the third quarter, early fourth quarter? I mean, obviously for us who have seen him all year, it was really different to see him do struggle like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, things, situations happen, things happen, you know, it's how we're going to rebound. Um, you know, we thought we would, after a couple of turnovers, we was going to bounce back, you know, and it, 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 it just wasn't clicking for him and for our offense. The defense is playing, you know, our offense really well. So, you know, it's just, I mean, things happen. Jacory, is it, I mean, this this might seem obvious, but is it shocking when, when you guys have had so few turnovers all year and then they all happen in a string like that? I think it was four interceptions in a span of 12 passes. Like, was, was that kind of demoralizing for you guys? Right, yeah, that, that, was, that was tough seeing, you know. Um, he only threw one other pick this season. And then to see him, you know, kind of go out like that and, you know, turn the ball over a few times more than he did all season long was difficult seeing. And I know it was difficult for him. But, you know, Sam Sam's a good guy. Sam's a great football player. And, you know, we'll, we'll definitely bounce back from it um, get better. Yeah, how would you describe the, the mood in the locker room and, and I guess the resolve of the team in the, in the wake of this loss. Um, you know, it's been it's been a very long season, and um, you know, guys wanted to go out with a with a win. I'm sure, um, but I know everybody played their tail off. You know, we are just we just didn't finish off at the end. Jacory, Sean kind of mentioned before you came in that uh, you guys. You know, you only played nine games and you usually play 13, but he said it felt like you guys had played 20. Um, now that it's over, how mentally exhausting was this season for you? Uh, yeah, this has been a very, very long season. Um, we, we did a lot of a lot of practicing and, and we didn't have as many games as we thought we would. But, you know, um, we, was, we was in game, we was game ready, we was in season. We were going to do whatever it took to get to this engine here. Um, it didn't turn out the right way, but it, it's all good. How quickly after you get home do you think you'll want to be getting back with the guys around campus and get spring ball started? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to miss the boys for, for a little while. Um, you know, we go back to school in like three weeks, but it give me about two or three days. I'll be ready to be back with them going to work. Jacory, you talked about this being a long season, and maybe it's not a fair question to ask you so close after the, the final gun today, but what are you going to take away from this year with everything that you guys went through, the lack of practices, the lack of, or the lack of, you know, spring ball, that sort of thing, and getting back in in June and, and being basically sequestered this whole time, the testing, the cancellations. I mean, it's been a lot for you guys. Yeah, it, it's definitely been a lot, but, you know, the guys stuck with it and, and you know, that's a, that's a sign of, of grit. It's a sign of, you know, you want to play for your brothers. That's just a sign of we want to be together and we want to be your team. And, you know, that shows a lot from everybody in the locker room. And, you know, I'm, I'm proud of everybody that stuck with it. And it, it it's difficult. It's, it's hard. You know, we, we, we lost tonight, Jay, um, and it's just, you know, disappointing. Um, but, you know, I'm, I think guys are pretty happy. Have you had a, had a chance yet to, you know, over the last few weeks, kind of reflect on the season you put together? I think it's fair to say going into 2021, Ja'Cory Roberson's a name that's probably going to be talked about a lot. Do you, do you kind of feel that? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel and understand that. But, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. I don't, I don't really care too much about that. Um, you know, I really wanted to win today. And, you know, we we still got another chance next year to 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 back it up. So it's it's whatever. It does bear asking since you just had the season you had and you're a fourth year guy. Are you thinking you're going to be coming back to Wake next year, Jabari? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the plan. Um, I plan to come back here to Wake next year um, for my for my fifth year. Uh, yeah, so.
Well, thank you, guys. Uh, see y'all. Thanks, Corey. All right. Trevion, without um, saying too much about the offense, just how frustrating is it to keep being put on the field when Wisconsin's at the two yard line, three yard line, their 30 yard line? Like, how I frustrating mean, was that? Yeah, I mean, it's real tough getting, dealing with that type of offense in short yardage situations like goal line because. It, it, it becomes four down football and they're going to try to pound it for, for two yards, four times. And they, I mean, they got big boys on the O-line and they're just giving it to the full back who's also like 230, 240 pounds and just, just falling forward. So it's hard dealing with teams like that in short yardage. And But when we go out there, we try to, we, our mentality is to stop them. So we don't do it so much. Trayvon, you've been watching Sam all year. How shocked were you when he started throwing those interceptions like that? Uh, it's, it's really shocking. I mean, the offense was in a groove, in my opinion. I feel like they were moving the ball pretty good. They was giving us uh, time to regroup on the sideline, and they was putting up points early on. So having them come out there and turn the ball over so, so frequently late in the game was really shocking and surprising to me. I mean, it kind of kind of hurt us as a defense, because it was putting us in bad situations. But I mean, our whole objective is to go out there and, and stop them if we can. I mean, we did block a field goal, but we can only do it so much. Trevion, what's what's kind of the mood of the team in the locker room, and and then how do you, how do you kind of bounce back from this and and regroup for for another season? Uh, right now, I mean, we're hurt. I mean, we we knew we was in that game. We knew we had what it took to win that game, and just to come up so short, uh, it hurts. It really hurts, especially all, after all that we've been through and all, all the uh, time and effort and preparation we put into that game. Uh, the outcome had it, it. It didn't show how how much effort we put into the game, and we was really in that game. We could have easily won. And I don't guess anybody's really had a chance to ask you yet, and it's probably a terrible time, but are you planning on coming back next season? Uh, uh, yes, I, I still got a lot more work to be doing, to do. Trey, usually bowls like this, if we're, we're trying to grab the seniors because it might be the last time we talk to them for a while, but this is a little, it feels a little different because there's so many guys in that locker room like yourself that are coming back. Is there, you know, it, does it feel like that's different to you? Like that, that, you know, most of the team that was out there today is going to be back on the field in 2021 for Wake? All right. Looking forward, I mean, it's, it's, it seems like we're going to have a lot of players coming back that are going to be key key factors on pretty much both sides of the ball. So I feel like we're going to have a very promising season next year. So and having everybody come back on defense, it means we're not having to replace many, many uh, different key pieces uh, we can literally uh, work out the little kings that we do have and have the, a bunch of older guys. Like, everybody's going to be older guys. So we're not having to literally uh, deal with a lot of uh, inexperience. You also sure. figure to have some depth, right? I mean, you guys, are, you're, you're going to have some depth for the first time in a little while. That's that's always the key going into each season is creating depth, uh, trying to get the young guys ready. And now that the young guys are getting more experience, and then having a bunch of older guys come back, uh, the depth is is going to really help us in the long run. Trey, I think you mentioned it earlier, but is this loss more difficult to stomach just because of all the challenges that this year presented? To me, I think so. Uh, we knew that coming in that this was going to be a fourth quarter game, and it kind of got cut cut short due to uh, all the turnovers that we was doing on our offense and all the mistakes that we was making on defense. We kind of literally we just gave them the game almost. Uh, we was hurting ourselves so much in this game. We didn't even give ourselves a fighting chance coming down to the wire. Trey, kind of following up on that. 
the, the everything that you guys went through this season, and maybe it's not fair to ask you right now because the game is just so this last one is so fresh, but can you kind of put into words what 2020 was like for you guys and the cancellations, the testing, the lack of spring, and I mean, just all the uncertainty? I, I feel like we was coming into it, we knew there was going to be some complications, but once you get into the season, and I mean, we got on the a win streak after the first uh, couple games, and we felt like we was getting in a groove. And then once cancellations, once COVID started becoming more problematic for us, it kind of hurt us because we was preparing for all these different teams. And then get to middle of the week and having to cancel, and now we having to throw that preparation away. And then we having to uh, miss out on opportunities to play. I mean. For me, at least, I, I haven't played since UNC. So it was, this is like my first game in like over a month and some change. So we have guys like me coming in and playing and it, it's kind of hard to deal with how everybody's coming off of COVID problems and issues with injury. We're having to deal with depth issues, people getting hurt. So dealing with all that, just, it, it took a real toll on us mentally uh, and getting to this point was really a strain, but we all pushed through it to the end. How good would it feel? How good will it feel rather to, to get home for a little bit and get a break? Uh, I know for me, at least, I, it's going to be a big recharge moment for me. Uh, I think everybody is ready to at least let loose and hang out with their family, uh, get home. We've all been here since June and some of us been here since May. I mean, so it's kind of a good thing to get people away from football for a little bit, a couple, a couple of weeks to recharge, uh, recover, uh, just regroup almost. Anything else for Trey? All right. Thanks, Trey. Thanks, Trey.